Water scarcity in Bengaluru is unprecedented. Many tanker services have stopped due to no water at the source, said a tweet, which had a picture of an SMS which read, We are having a nightmare of a situation in prestige Santini Ketan. Our taps are running dry every single day. This year we have had waterless days for the first time ever. Bengaluru's water is probably among the most energy inefficient on the planet. Every drop is pumped out using many megawatts of electricity, either from Kaveri or underground, said another tweet. The water shortage is not unique to Bengaluru, but can this city find a long-term solution or will it flounder with short-term thinking? Are the authorities capable of putting together a long-term solution? Are the politicians missing your forest for their trees? Has the governance completely failed us as people? And have we as people failed ourselves in how we value water over our cars and our luxuries? Brand Bengaluru is taking a beating as it grapples with the worst crisis in recent memory. Is there an app for this? Probably not. We speak with Vishwanath Shikantaya, popularly known as Zen Rain Man, with decades of experience in making sure water goes back into the ground so we can get enough of it. He is the voice of reason and experience. Let's hear from him. So, Vishwana, thank you for uh, uh, joining us again. Uh, last time we spoke about uh, flooding. This time it's going to be about the exact opposite. We don't have enough water. So, I just wanted to understand how bad the crisis really is. Is it universal? Is it just us? Uh, is it all across the world? Are we doing something wrong? What's going on? Well, uh, the situation is such that we draw 1,450 million liters from the Kaveri on a daily basis. That much of amount of water is assured because the four dams on the Kaveri Basin, the Hemavati, the Harangi, the KRS and the Kavini, together have about 48 TMC feet of water, 1,000 million cubic feet of water. For the next 100 days, we'll need about 10.8 TMC feet. This includes the additional 775 million liters per day, which is supposed to come in from April or perhaps May. So pipe water from the Kaveri is assured. It's the groundwater which is in a crisis. So we are not even uh, through to summer, like you said, and we are already running short of water. Uh, do you think it is? Uh, where do you think the problem lies in the in the short term? How do we tide over this? Where is where really is the problem? Because there's a uh, on on the one hand the piped water doesn't reach the places. On the other hand, BBMP is trying to dig more bore wells. Uh, what's going on? So what's happening is that where the Kaveri network has reached, that's roughly about 1.05 million connections, there's some water for those people. So there's not really that much of a crisis for them. It's where the network has not reached, where people are completely dependent on bore wells or tankers which bring water from bore wells, that there's a crisis. And that crisis also is also because some of the major lakes in Bangalore, like Bellandur and Vartur or, uh, or others in the north, are in the process of being desilted and therefore haven't had water for the last three to four years, which means that they haven't been able to feed the aquifers. So therefore, it's a combination of groundwater running out, of surface water bodies which could feed the groundwater being dry. We need to find ways of filling these surface water bodies. So there are these multiple agencies. Uh, PWCSP is unable to uh, catch up with the kind of layouts that are coming up and apartments that are coming out to provide the piped water. Uh, that's possibly a planning issue. And on the other hand, we have BBMP uh, trying to dig more bore wells. Uh, why are there this multiplicity of agencies and they are not able to talk to each other? That's a bit unfortunate, but that's the construct of water supply institutions of the 20th century. We don't have something called an integrated urban water management institution, which is responsible for all waters. That includes rainwater, which falls from the sky, lake water, which is surface water, or it could be in rivers and streams, groundwater, which is in shallow and deep aquifers, pipe water, which comes from rivers far away, but also treated wastewater or what we call used water, which could be brought into circulation. At least there should be better coordination on the IUWM parameters, if not all these waters being with one institution. One of the challenges also with extending water supply to an incrementally growing city is that investments in infrastructure are lumpy. Like the current Kaveri fifth phase is taking about 7,750 crore rupees. 
it will reach out to a certain extent of populace and supply 775 million liters per day. But the city is growing geographically and in terms of height vertically too. And that me means that some part of the city will always be dependent on groundwater in addition to the pipe water supply. So can the water tankers tide over? There are lots of issues with the water tankers, right? The private uh, water tankers, uh, they do charge uh, uh, quite a bit, but not. it's not astronomical. It might be uh, what it is. But the PWSSP seem, or the BBMP seems to be cutting down and saying, we'll run our own tankers, right? And uh, we don't need these guys. Uh, so are tankers a short cap solution when the piping is a lumpy investment, which, will, which is a lag? Can this be the mobile solution to the landline? Definitely. Tankers will be part of the solution, especially in the periphery. The private water tankers are charging a higher sum for two reasons. One, the cost of production itself is going up. Bore wells are yielding less and less. It takes more time to fill a tanker and therefore they do lesser number of trips and therefore it affects their profit. Of course, the other is that they're trying to do some amount of price capture because of scarcity. One good way of tackling it is to increase the number of tankers, not to decrease or regulate it, but actually get more competition going. And for the BWSSB to step in, along with the BBMP, and supply water, which is also the Kaveri water, which relieves pressure on the groundwater to these far-flung areas. By a combination of BWSSB, BBMP supply of Kaveri-based tanker water, and increased number of private tanker water, which draw water from what are called filtered bore wells near lakes, which are filled with uh, treated wastewater, we can tide over the problem quite easily. But I don't know if they'll respond as quickly as the private guy does. I call him and uh, in, in eight to 10 minutes flat, he's here. Of course, it's not too far. And uh, their responsiveness might be more. We might pay a little more for that. But think about this. He's not getting water from the air. He's making it out from somewhere else. It's either... Uh, Kaveri water from somebody else's uh, property or the borewell that he has dug for himself and is selling it for a fee. Uh, so, so what do you think of the supply itself? Is actually Bangalore not having enough water? Is there a supply gap itself? There is a supply gap insofar as groundwater is concerned because groundwater is obviously running out in the periphery. And as I discussed, Satya, it's running out because the surface water bodies are not filled. I'll just give you an example. If Bellandur and Vartur lakes were to be filled with tertiary treated wastewater, these two lakes alone would be recharging the equivalent of 102 million liters per day. Their influence zone would be as much as 10 to 12 kilometers. Borewells there would get charged. Apartments which have borewells could draw water from their own borewells and private water tankers which have borewells in that area would be able to draw greater volumes and be able to supply better. We need a quick fix solution of connecting the wastewater treatment plants of the BWSSB, 34 of them, to our surface water bodies with tertiary treated wastewater. So, so how how much of it is actually uh, uh, cavalry driven? Do you think Bengaluru we typically associate all piped water with just Kaveri and we are used to that, right? We don't think there's any other water that is available, but our groundwater is a big enough portion of this and we get rains, we have wastewater. Uh, you were mentioning some math earlier about this whole uh, supply thing. Are we having a shortage or how do we overcome this with the other sources of water really? So here's the water balance for Bangalore. We're getting 1,450 million liters per day. We'll get an additional 775 million liters per day. That's 2,225 million liters per day. What falls as rainwater is about 3,000 million liters per day. Let's say we put 500 MLD to productive use. There's an additional 600 million liters per day from groundwater. And when you put all this together, there's 2,280 million liters per day of treated used water. Some amount of all this is about 5,600 million liters per day. At 135 million liters, uh, 135 liters per capita per person, this is good enough for a population of 41 million people. It's not a resource scarcity as much as an investment and management scarcity where we plan for all these forms of water, rainwater, groundwater, treated used water, and pipe water, including the lakes as part of the solution. Then we are through with this problem. There seems to be very little importance to lakes. I think people feel that uh, it is easy to forget, you know, that the importance of lakes in our city, uh, especially Bengaluru being where it is, uh, high up and the cost of pumping water for BWSSP to get a scavery. Uh, 
uh, how much of our groundwater can fill the demand that we have right now are we actually having a shortage how much will this fill so we're drawing about anywhere between 600 million liters to 800 million liters per day of groundwater a large par- portion of this groundwater was being recharged by leaking pipes of the kaveri network some amount of it from lakes and some amount of it from the rainwater harvesting that people have done picking rooftop rainwater and putting it into the ground we need to systematically systematically map the aquifers of bangalore especially the sub aquifers look at their storage capacities look at where they're getting recharged from and then make sure that we push that water there there's already regulation for rainwater harvesting we need to apply it at scale because that will push water into the ground when it rains but when it doesn't rain we'll have to look at strategies of pushing treated used water tertiary treated used water into the shallow aquifer to make up for that ground water that we abstract some balance between demand and supply will have to be drawn up and that will have to be drawn up through graduated maps with hydrogeologists doing that mapping and aquifer planning on the one hand while well, bwssb tries i i can understand why the bbmp wants to kind of uh, have the corporators dig more bore wells it seems to be quite lucrative they are digging bore wells left right and center can we dig our way out of this because we seem to be depleting groundwater aquifers so we can't dig out out of our way out of this uh, from a groundwater perspective because most of the bore wells are now drying up so if you drill fresh bore wells they are most likely to be dry they're not going to strike water and even if they strike water they will deplete surrounding bore wells so net gain for the community is zero therefore we need to focus our attention on recharging the aquifers rather than extracting from these aquifers that should be our plan so the the question then comes to the political uh, support right uh, i i we all know that uh, the politicians uh, of the day of the government of the day uh, are well versed in the real estate game i can see them speaking they seem to know ins and outs of uh, uh, how the real estate game works but brand bengaluru itself is taking a beating because of this right the cities are becoming uh, water scarce due to lack of technical capacity of uh, planning executing catching up and having uh, this multiplicity of organizations trying to do different things why aren't politicians paying attention to this it's it's the brand of the city itself is taking a beating how can they not consider this a priority so the city is struck by its own success it's facing the problem of fast expanding uh, private layouts in the periphery simply because that seems to be in the minds of those real estate developers a potential to sell to to buyers who would flock and buy these uh, sites and maybe apartments there on the periphery but the city does not have a cdp and it's uh, the comprehensive development plan so therefore the the danger is that we will lock ourselves into a bad form of planning on the periphery of the city which we have seen in the past and that will gridlock us into expanding in a more systematic fashion the challenge here is this that when these private layouts come up they can only be regulated very very lightly in terms of rainwater harvesting setting up their own wastewater treatment plants to make sure that their water system is more robust however when the infrastructure has to reach these uh, private layouts the bwssb often finds it very difficult to to do the connectivity of broad trunk lines as well as locating stps there's no place for sewage treatment plants in these uh, private layouts which means that when you have to locate a larger scale stp it's not in my backyard and then there's a problem of how do you collect the sewage make sure that you treat it and make sure that it doesn't pollute the environment so private layouts are a big hindrance to the development of the city and it actually affects brand bangalore so here's the thing we take only about 6.66% of karnataka's allocation of kaveri water currently it will go up to 11% when we draw the 2225 million liters per day and we support a population of 40% of karnataka in the kaveri basin not to mention the gdp which is supported by these waters which can be 350 billion dollars or maybe about 40 to 60% of the state's contribution itself so is there enough water in the kaveri for the city of bangalore yes there is however we have to make sure that this water is used efficiently and wisely but also recirculated currently these waters actually makes a 12 hour pit stop in the city water comes from the kaveri stops in the houses and apartments in the city 
flows to sewage treatment plants where they are collected, treated, and then it's shipped to Kolar, Chikbalapur, Anikal, and Ramnagram, where farmers then have access to this water as groundwater because this treated wastewater is filling the lakes of Kolar and Chikbalapur and Anikal. So then the farmers have livelihood security and in turn the city gets food security because the produce that the farmers grow comes back to the city. This is a wise move. So there is enough and more water from the Kaveri, but also from the other forms of water that I described, like rainwater, groundwater, and treated wastewater. So there's no real resource scarcity. Institutionally, are we structured between BWSSP and BBMP, which each one doing its own thing with the corporators want to dig more and BBMP saying, I'll dig more. And BWSSP trying to catch up with their pipes in lump sums. Uh, it's a lag all the time. What structure are you envisioning for this? How do we bring this together on the technical side of things? The political side, you know, unless they pay attention. So one of the ways is to well round the BWSSB. That is to create a groundwater cell as a beginning where there are hydrogeologists who are experienced and who know how to map the aquifers and draw up a groundwater management plan, right? Then when we plan and understand groundwater and formally integrate it to the city's water supply, we are better off. Right now it's Wild West territory and therefore we have competitive drilling instead of cooperative refilling, right? Similarly, we need skills in managing our surface water bodies as urban lakes not rural regional lakes which were meant for irrigation but urban lakes which fulfill the promise of ecological habitat biodiversity, social livelihoods as well as functionality. We need these lakes to be vibrant spots but also which receive treated wastewater and recharge the aquifers. So therefore you need a used water cell in the BWSSB. Finally, we need democratic accountability. The BWSSB should be accountable to the Metropolitan Planning Committee and at the local level, they should be accountable to the ward committees, which then plan for ward budgets for water and make sure that all forms of water in the ward are justly protected and taken care of. Plus, there is universal connection to every household in the ward. That's critical and crucial, not only for water supply, but for sanitation. The people seem to be helpless. They don't have water. They're just going to say, I am helpless. I ask my people and they just give me this Band-Aid. So the BBMP gives them Band-Aid. Their corporators, who we don't have now, might give them Band-Aid. How do we get people to understand what they can do as well, right? One is definitely make this an election issue. You can't have a city and you talk about branding the city and have this, right? And it's not that they don't want to do, but they're probably jumping to smaller solution, convenient solution rather than the larger one. What can the people do? How do they value this? Because they don't seem to value this water when it is there, probably because their builder didn't do this for them. Individual houses like mine, you know, when you build it 15 years ago, it has still served me well. The water level is still the same. In in fact, my neighbor has dug it up at uh, 800 feet and I'm still at 250 feet getting the same water, right? But individual, if you look at blocks of apartments that are coming, are they doing the right thing? And is that, have we measured that they are doing the right thing? Is it going in the right direction? So these blocks of apartments are already mandated to have individual meters for every flat, for example, by the BWSSB, which means that we have a sense of how much water they're consuming at every flat. You can send a price signal for water conservation. It's mandated to have automatic level controllers from the sump tank to the overhead tank so that there's no overflow of waters, right? It's mandated to have rainwater harvesting. Every one of these apartments and individual homes have to harvest 60 millimeters per square meter of roof area for rainwater harvesting. And it's mandated to have a wastewater treatment plant for any set of apartments, more than 20 in number, or for any gated community. So the regulations are in place. If citizens become water literate and make sure that they take care of these regulations themselves, it will ease the pressure on water to a great extent. However, citizens also have to reach out beyond themselves to the communities around, to the watershed around, and make sure that they take an interest in the local lakes and that the local lake is protected, not filled with construction debris, and receives rainwater in its purest form or treated wastewater of adequate quality to keep it full. This will only help them because it will recharge the aquifer in the entire watershed and in the entire sub-aquifer. But the bottom line is, are we paying the true cost for water? Citizens have to become aware that the water is very, very costly for Bangalore. It has to be transported 100 kilometers and 300 meters up. And one guess is that the cost of water is about 95 rupees for a thousand liters. We pay seven and 11 rupees or in apartments, 21 rupees a kiloliter. If we do not start to pay the true economic cost of water, the institution, which is the BWSSB, will be permanently broke and incapable of extending services, repairing services, or making sure that wastewater is collected and treated to adequate quality. Water 
literacy is at the heart of citizenship in Bangalore because water is the most crucial of natural resources. If you build like uh, this huge complexes of two and a half thousand, four thousand apartments and you don't have a water plan which is a sustainable water plan, you're creating dependencies on systems like private water tankers and that's a very fragile system. How then do you take more responsibility? I think every individual flat buyer has to ask this fundamental question, what have you done to, to the builder to make sure that water is available for me when I require it the most? And those answers will need to be very robust and it will also involve the BWSSP. Yeah, I think that's the way to uh, look at it. Put pressure on the system, have politicians pay attention. This is as important as uh, as your tunnel or whatever it is. We, Like you said, we can support almost... Uh, 50 plus million people, if we did the right things, returning the water back uh, to the ground is the most important part of this. We are losing a lot of water uh, that could easily be harvested. I think consumers should start looking at what kind of apartments are you just getting into. But uh, the real estate is uh, eating up water bodies like anything. Thank you very much, Vishy, for uh, coming on the show. You're most welcome. <laughs>